ulnar nerve palsies can result from the compression of the ulnar nerve anywhere along its path. And injury in the cubital tunnel region results in the cubital tunnel syndrome. Now we will go through sites of compression in the cubital tunnel from proximally to distally. The first site of entrapment can be in the medial intermuscular septum, specifically where the ulnar nerve penetrates at the site of the arcades of strathers. Next is the main part of the cubital tunnel. Remember that the floor of the cubital tunnel is formed by the medial collateral ligament and the lateral walls are formed by the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris, while the roof is formed by the aponeurosis joining the two heads and the Osborne's ligament. Here the ulnar nerve can be compressed by osteophytes on the medial epicondyle or it can be trapped by the Osborne's ligament or the aponeurosis. After entering the anterior compartment of the forearm, the nerve can be trapped by the pronator aponeurosis, which originates from the pronator teres to the flexor carpi ulnaris. Symptoms related to the entrapment can be exacerbated by flexion of the arm, due to the tensioning of the nerve as well as a narrowing of the cubital tunnel. Symptoms are worse in patients with cubital valgus as the nerve is pulled further away from the elbow. An additional cause could be due to ulnar nerve subluxation, which is when the nerve moves away from the groove formed by the medial epicondyle and the olecranon to the medial edge of the medial epicondyle. An ulnar nerve dislocation can also occur where the ulnar nerve moves anteriorly to the medial epicondyle. A subluxation or dislocation is more likely to happen during elbow flexion as the nerve is tensioned. A second important region for ulnar nerve pauses is at the Guillon's Canal, which is called the Guillon's Canal Syndrome or ulnar tunnel syndrome. Common causes of entrapment include a ganglionic cyst, a mass, trauma, or muscle anomaly, or an ulnar artery aneurysm. Remember that the ulnar nerve divides in the Guyens canal into its superficial and deep branches. Therefore, the symptoms can be either sensory or motory or both, depending on which fibers are being compressed. An important feature distinguishing an ulnar tunnel syndrome from a cubital tunnel syndrome is the ulnar nerve paradox. One quick reminder, the ulnar nerve supplies the third and fourth lumbricals of the hand as well as all the palmar and dorsal interossei muscles of the hand. During attempted extension of the fingers by the patient, the paralysis of the interossei will lead to the unopposed hyperextension of the MCP joint due to the extensor digitorum, and the paralysis of the lumbricals and the interossei muscles will lead to the flexion of both the interphalangeal joints by the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. However, if the site of injury of the bone or nerve is more proximal, such as at the cubital tunnel, this can also lead to the paralysis of the flexor digitorum profundus. Therefore, there will be reduced flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint, leading to a less severe claw hand appearance. In summary, the classical claw hand appearance due to the ulnar nerve palsy is more prominent in a distal ulnar nerve palsy, where the flexor digitorum muscles are not affected.